now to Central Life Sciences. That's a division of Central Garden and Pet, a total insect management company. Kirk Daly is the sales development manager with the swine team there at Central Life Sciences. Welcome, Kurt, with your product information. Good morning, Iowa pork producers. This is Kirk Daly coming to you from my COVID confined office in Central Illinois. We are teaming up today with Iowa Pork Congress to bring you an instructional video on insect pest management brought to you by Central Life Science. But first, we're going to highlight a new product to our Star Bar lineup known as Alluvium. It's a cockroach bait paste. Enjoy. Next up, we bring you Dr. Grant Allison from Walcott Veterinary Clinic in Walcott, Iowa. Dr. Grant Allison has been instrumental in helping us prove at Iowa State that flies are indeed a disease vector transfer for many of the economical disastrous diseases that affect the swine industry today. Dr. Grant, take it away. So the connection between flies and uh, PED, porcine epidemic diarrhea virus, started in uh, 2017 with a conversation uh, about why this outbreak uh, seemingly comes out of nowhere. And it came up fairly quickly in some conversations that uh, it, it would have to be an obvious link between fecal material containing uh, copious amounts of virus uh, and what would transmit that, and that could be flies. In April of 2018, uh, with some funding, uh, we went ahead and did a bioassay at Iowa State, so we again captured flies. The virus was on the flies, <laughs> it replicates by itself, so it's a live virus. So the bioassay was positive, showing that flies can be a vector for PED. So, you know, where does the virus come from that the, the flies can transmit? You know, again, it's is that connection with manure. And so you have to start looking at the pit itself. These coronaviruses, these RNA viruses can at least remain their genetic material in the pit for uh, hundreds of days. The actual quantity of virus is astronomical in that pit. So the probability of some remaining viable is just too logical not to consider. You know, in the 30 some years I've been in practice, uh, I never really considered flies to be an important component of disease transmission. And, and it was a nuisance, you know, it was just a, you know, get them out of your face kind of problem. But now knowing what we know and, and even what we don't know, but speculate uh, bumps fly control higher up on the list of preventative measures that, that we need to consider, you know, and in the case of PED, um, you know, on a typical, say, 3,000 sow farm, when you look at that cost, it's going to be upwards of a half a million dollars. And so fly control becomes a much more economical consideration than just a, a nuisance type of thing that maybe you deal with with something or, or not. You know, there's various means to do fly control. And and personally, I, I don't like the baits and the sprays. I, I think you're going to get poor coverage uh, some of the times of year really don't want to be spraying liquid on pregnant animals uh, just from a stress standpoint. 
uh, some part from a worker safety standpoint where they're handling these products, maybe can't read the directions well. Um, and so we have to find something that's user-friendly, safe, and can be disseminated throughout the environment. And so I've liked the, the feed additive product where the mill can handle the, the control means, if you will. And then since it's going through the feed, it's going through all the fecal output of the animals throughout the environment. So there's not really a place for those flies to hide. And in our case, we've we've chosen Clarify uh, and have had very good luck with that. It's it's worked about exactly like we were we were expecting. In about three weeks, you know, the fly population has been disrupted and they're they're just gone. The spinoff that we didn't expect uh, and may have <clears throat> in part more value uh, is the workers' opinion of the environment and being there without all those flies. And workers really notice that and enjoy that environment being free of those nuisance uh, in their in their face. And I'm quite sure the animals do benefit from that as well. Next up, we join Tom Pastor at a farm in Ohio that has fed a feeding trial with Clarifly and had remarkable results. Take it away, Tom. Generally, we have a reaction from a producer that they feel there's a fly problem. First of all, it's the visual numbers and the specs the fly leaves behind. In addition to creating sanitation issues, they also create biosecurity challenges. Biosecurity is a very important part of the swine industry. We're challenged by diseases such as Seneca Valley virus, PED, PERS, and now African swine fever. All these have been proven to be carried by insects, especially flies. The flies want to go into the pit. Underneath these sows, there's liquid manure, and they'll want to lay their eggs in that liquid manure. So these are some of the important factors why we use Clarifly in the feed to affect the larval production of the flies and keep them from hatching. Clarifly is very simple to use. You add it to the ration at the mill, the pigs eat it every day, and place the product where it's most effective, in the manure. It requires no additional labor or time on the part of the employees. If Clarifly is in the feed, the pigs do the work for you. The exciting thing about Clarifly, it's an IGR. It's new technology. It's a bio-rational molecule that's very safe in the environment. There's no other molecule that has the bio-rational aspect to it that's EPA approved to use in swine rations. In conclusion today, we've proven that flies are indeed a disease vector transfer for many of the diseases that um, affect our industry, such as PEDV, PERS, Seneca Valley, and now it's proven that stable flies can transmit African swine fever. They are also a nuisance to our animals, a nuisance to our employees, and a nuisance to our neighbors and neighborhoods. So when you're looking to get on top of next year's fly populations, think of Clarifly feed through fly control and allow the star bar adulticides to um, clean up your adults that you might have left over. We are now going to open it up for a question and answer session, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Kirk, that was some great information from the folks there at Central Life Sciences. We do have just a couple quick questions in our short amount of time here. Um, for Alluvium, what are some of the safety tips in applying it? Safety tips for applying Alluvium would be clearly kind of what was in that video. It, uh, a very convenient, if you've ever laid a bead of caulk, it would be very similar. Put it in a typical caulking gun. Uh, the consistency of the product is somewhere between toothpaste right out of the tube and peanut butter. The good part about it is that it does not um, <clears throat> solid up like caulk would, often plugging the tube if you didn't use it all. It stays pretty, it might dry out just a little bit on that tip that's exposed to the environment, but um, just simply gloving up and then just not putting too much out at one time. Um, also, as illustrated in that video, would be helpful safety tips. Our next question is about uh, the Clarify fly. Um, what other insects are affected by that besides flies? Um, the dark-eyed fruit fly, which many of us would commonly refer to as a gnat in our swine environments, it's actually a dark-eyed fruit fly. It would get those, any flies that lay their eggs in decomposing feed or organic matter. And it would also get the Indian meal moth. And that uh, is the critter that's uh, 
clogging up our uh, automated systems and pipes with a cobweb type leave behind, uh, it would also get those once they're, uh, once the product is in the feed. And what about withdrawal times? Are there any withdrawal times on these products? There are codexes in place. It's a very safe, environmentally sound molecule. It's purely a pass-through. Um, there's no passive transfer across the small intestine within the pig. Um, so withdrawal times, there is none. Um, it, it doesn't get into the animal at all. It simply, uh, simply treats the manure so that when flies lay their eggs in the manure, it prevents them access to chitin to put on the hard exoskeleton where they emerge from their pupae as a reproducing adult fly. So essentially it kills them in the larval stage within the manure, but there are no withdrawal times. And the last very important question, Kirk, how do our producers reach you uh, to get more information or, or these products? You can go to uh, centralflycontrol.com to get more information on our products calculator, how to mix it. Um, we have two different kinds of Clarifly, um, 2.67 and 0.67, and they have a little bit different mixing uh, amounts on a per ton basis. I can also be reached at kdaily at central.com or at 815-761-1668. Kirk Daly, we really appreciate you being with us today. And as always, we appreciate your support of our producers, the Iowa Pork Congress, and of course, you're being a member of the Iowa Pork Alliance. We thank you very much for the opportunity to be here today and for you guys pulling this off virtually. Thanks, Kirk. Have a great day.